Hi everyone, my name is Risha Malibiran from Every Nation Campus, PUP Binyan. Before I met Christ po talaga, marami po kasing struggle noon sa family namin noong 2019 po. Nagkasakit po yung pamangking ko po na parang 50-50 na po, ganyan. Tapos nakulong pa yung kuya ko, sabi ko, parang pasan ko po yung mundo that time na ang dami pong question na hindi ko po masagot-sagot, lagi ko po inaasigad na ba't nandito ako sa family ng ganito, parang ang bababa ng confident ko sa sarili ko, lagi ko po kinakasyon na hanggang dito ka lang. Yung value ko, tinitignan ko po sa ibang tao, ganyan. Every Nation Campus has a big impact to me po. Na nalid nila po ako kung ano po yung purpose ko sa buhay. Sobrang grateful din po ako kasi sila po yung tatanungin ka kung kamusta ka na kasi big impact po yun eh. Nakakapag-fellowship po kami. May mga natuto kami ng about sa life ko po, yung integrity, faith and excellence po. Yung time na po yun, parang nakatagpo ako, ako ng tatay, ng kaibigan, feeling na wala kang kinakatakutan na i-judge ka niya, ganun. Sobrang grateful po ako na meron po akong ganun sa buhay ko po. Before po, lagi po ako umiiyak. Yung ibang student, nare-reach out ko, nakakausap ko, pero bakit parang ang hirap dito sa family ko na parang walang willing makinig ganun. Tapos yun po, nagkaroon po ng opportunity, lalo na po nung quarantine, na akala ko po wasted time lang yung quarantine. Hindi po pala opportunity po pala yun to share the word of God din po. Nakakapag-reach out na po ako ng pamangkin ko na hindi na po ako nahihiya kung ano yung kalalabasan niya kasi sigad yung pinapakilala ko dito kaya walang sayang. Yung mama ko po sabi niya, ah, hindi tayo po babayaan niya. Papagalingin niya yan si King, sabi niya gano'n. Yung confident po na gano'n na hindi tayo mag magkukulang sa finances kasi sigad yung provider natin. Sobrang sarap po sa feeling nun na gano'n na po yung thinking ng nanay ko, gano'n na po yung family ko, inuunti-unti na yun po kami. Tapos po alam na din po nila yung worship song, nakikisabay na po sila. Kaya hindi po ako natatakot sa rejection kasi po alam ko si Christ nagmumove po. When we reach a student, we reach a family. Through your partnership, we are able to reach disciple and empower students like Rachel to be salt and light to their families and communities. Our hope is to reach more students and help them grow in their character and faith, which will enable them to make an impact not only in their campuses, but also to their families and communities for the better. Thank you for your generosity and for believing in the next generation with us. Let's not stop in changing the campus and changing the world.
everyone. Welcome to our online worship service. And as we prepare our hearts to worship, let me just encourage you all from Psalms 27 verses 13 to 14 in the NIV version. And it says here, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. I guess the ongoing pandemic has emphasized our frustrations, impatience, because a lot of our plans are delayed, and thus our timeline is not being followed. And it's almost two years, but it is my hope and my prayer that these two years don't dictate what your whole life is all about. And I hope that the descriptions that you have in these two years don't replace the faithfulness of God in your whole life. And as we worship, may we get to declare what the psalmist is saying in the verses, that we will remain confident, that we will be strong, that we will take heart, and that we will wait for the Lord because God has proven His goodness and faithfulness time and time again, whether sa big moments ng buhay natin or in the mundane, He is faithful. And may we continue to let our heart, our mind, our soul, and strength remember that truth in our lives. So now, church, let's worship our awesome and faithful God. Come on, church, let's worship Him today. Worship you, our unchanging God. Sing your word. Your word is true, it will never fail. Our soul secure that you will carry us through. Seasons will change, the sun and moon will fade away. But our hope is sure that forever you reign. Let it be as you.
Well, you've gone ahead of us. Now we will trust in our unchanging God. Your will, your will eternal. Yes, Lord. Our lives are in your hands. Now we will stand in victory. Stand in victory, Lord.
Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for this opportunity that we are able to freely worship you, God. Lord, we ask that you prepare our hearts, that you prepare our minds, Father, and may you continue to work in our lives. Lord, have your way in our lives. Let your will be done always in our lives and our families as well. We give you back all the praises and glory in your mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. So church, let's continue to worship God through our giving. Our verse is found in Matthew 6 verses 19 to 21 and it says here, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You know what? What we treasure the most controls us, whether we admit it or not. And Jesus made it clear that valuing the wrong treasures, things that are temporary, things that rust leads to our hearts being in the wrong place. And he reminds us to value eternal treasures, things that fulfill God's purposes and advance his kingdom. And may our hearts be invested on things that really matter. Let me pray to all of you. Let's pray, Lord, thank you for this opportunity that we are able to worship you through our giving. Whether it may be big or small, Lord, cause us to remind us to be reminded that yung motive mismo ng hearts nat, namin yung pinaka-importante as we give. And Lord, as we give, Father, may it be a vessel of blessing to a lot of people, to a lot, to a lot of places, God. And may your kingdom be advanced through what we have in our lives, what we have given in our lives. All these things we ask in your mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. So church, let me just quickly share to you different ways you can give. First, you can conveniently um, pay through Gcash or Paymaya. You can just scan the Victory Davao QR code that is flashed on your screen. Second, you may do a direct deposit or online bank transfer to the different bank accounts of Victory Davao. We have BPI, Metro Bank, DDO, and AUB. And thirdly, you may visit the church and drop your giving in our offering boxes here. Victory Davao is open from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Monday to Saturday. And if you need help, you can message us in Facebook. So church, God bless as you give. I'm Heidi Villanueva. I'm a church admin sa Victory Turil. I'm a single parent. I have a daughter, six years old, and I believe that I am partnering with God in raising her as my daughter. Since uh, 2020, uh, I believe not everyone has really gone through challenges while we are in this pandemic. So, I talaga lubos maisip that we will come to a point na ma hospitalize yung daughter ko. So, there was this one time that she had fever and then it's really God's way of telling me na ipalab na siya. So, being in this pandemic, parang it's a nightmare ba na I go to the doctor considering that Nasa MECQ pa ang Davao City and the COVID case is really rising. But then, sabi ko, how can I have peace of mind if I do not know what's happening to my daughter? I gained courage no, to, to send her to lab. And then yun nga, na positive siya to dengue. When the doctor saw na the platelet is nagag, nagababa na siya, she really told us na you have to admit her. But how can we admit her, de ba, when hospital rooms are not available. So what we did, me and my daughter, were praying, Lord, if it is your will that uh, my daughter will be hospitalized, you will open one room for her. You will ano talaga, zero out our bills. Walang maiwan. Biglang nag-call ang kanyang doctor and told us na, there's one room available, and that was our sign Now we have to go. So we were hospitalized, 
Yan pala toxic na yung case ng ng daughter ko. She was sent in ICU. And then for 11 days we were there and you can just imagine the bills are piling up and everything. But God is really true to his word, no. Kumagana yung pera ko sa wallet nung pumasok ako sa hospital. Hindi talaga siya nakuna ng kahit na piso. Our bill is 203,000 pesos and God really covered everything. God really provided us. Because I'm a single parent, no, parang when I see people, no, yung mga mga maanak nila hospitalized nandun yung parents, both parents. Ako, I was alone. Pero God is not somebody na parang nandun lang. You worship Him, and He did, He does not answer. God is a relational God. Every time you talk to Him, He will really respond. God was really with me, journeying with me. Father namin siyang dalawa ng anak ko. Good day, everyone. We're so glad that you could worship with us. And we are grateful for your faithfulness and your passion for the Lord. We just finished our three days uh, mid-year prayer and fasting. And more than just the act of sacrifice or the time of consecration, I do hope and pray that your relationship with God got deeper and your knowledge and the revelation of who God is, I hope that you get to worship Him all the more. You see, in our walk with the Lord, it's not just really about the things that we do, but more importantly, we always go back to who God is and what He has done in our lives. And today, we'll continue with our series, um, The Ability to Produce Wealth. And I love this series because it gives us a perspective of who God is and what He intends for every one of us. When we think of the covenant blessings of God, it's not just reserved for the people of Israel. It's not just for the pastors. It's not just for the businessmen, but for every one of us. But before we can truly appreciate and understand um, God's promise that He has given to His children uh, for the ability to create and to produce wealth, I hope and we pray that you would really start to understand that everything in the Word of God was entrusted and given to every child of God. And so if you're a child of God today, please be assured that the God who called you, that the God who saved you is the very God who would want to do His work in and through you, including your finances. As we begin, uh, I just want to encourage every one of you, open your Bibles and let's read Deuteronomy chapter 8. And we will be reading a couple of verses. We will jump from verses 2 to 4 and then we will read verses 14 to 16. So open your Bibles and together let us read Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 2 to 4 and then verses 14 to 16. The Word of God says, And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that the man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot does not or did not swell these 40 years. Let's jump to verse 14. It says here, Then your heart will be lifted up, and you forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the slavery, who led you through the great and terrifying wilderness with its fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty ground where there was no water, who brought you water out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna that your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and test you to do you good in the end. 
Let us pray. Lord, thank you for this very wonderful day that we could just worship together. We are your church, Lord. And thank you, God, for sustaining us. And Lord, we know that you will continue to sustain us. And Lord, we know that in every circumstance that we are in, in every challenges, God, that we face, Lord, you are always there. Lord, you will never leave us nor forsake us. And Lord, our greatest assurance is that, Lord, you are there and your word, God, has already been entrusted to us. So God, I pray for hunger, for thirst, Lord, for your word. Give us grace today as we get into your word. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. I used to play volleyball uh, when I was in high school and college. And I was kind of good. And someone asked me, Jopet, what was one of your best memories um, in terms of playing volleyball? And I would always go back to when we were in high school where we played in championships. And man, I, I was just really enjoying playing volleyball. We, we, we won competitions and we would play these different games. And I, I just enjoyed it. The camaraderie, yung mga kasama kong sa volleyball team, how deep our friendships were. And then after rehearsals or after practices, we would go on. Uh, so pupunta kami ng beach, maliligo kami. And those were some of the fun times. And then the same person asked me, so what were some of the worst um, memories or some of the worst incidents that you've experienced in volleyball? Sabi ko, madami. In fact, every time I think of volleyball, I could not forget the very moments that I was embarrassed, that we lost. And I remember one championship game, uh, being the team captain, people were just somehow expecting me to lead the team. And during the championship game, the third set, during the last play, what happened was I missed out on the ball. Being the setter, I'm supposed to get the second ball, and yet, hindi ko nakuha. So we ended up losing the game. And alam yung feeling na you're, you, you're supposed to lead the game and you're supposed to make the right plays. And what happened was, I missed out on the ball. And every time I think of it, even ang, hanggang ngayon, minsan iisip ko, Lord, ah, sayang. What could have been if we won that game? I realized that there are certain things in our lives, certain memories, certain incidents, certain circumstances that you don't want to remember. There are also victories in the past that you're like, ah, grave. Parang, I could just say that, sana pwede ma, sana maulit, paulit ulit yung, 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 yung memory na yun, yung happening na yun. But there are so many things in our lives that we choose to forget. Maybe it's an uh, incident that, you, that caused you so much pain. It could be an incident where it traumatized you. And a lot of times, these memories, we bury it, we, we throw it away. There are people that because of a particular, particular heartbreak, they would throw things or they would, just to cut off the memory, tatapon nila yung sing-sing sa dagat, sa bundok. Itatapon nila yung mga love letters, susunugin nila. Why? Because there are memories that are just plainly painful. And we don't want to remember these things. But the very instruction of God to the people of Israel is to not forget, but to remember. And God was seeing here through Moses in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2, And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness. Now, a short history recap. The people of Israel, they were, they lived in... Egypt because of Joseph, because there was a great famine in, in that part of the world or the whole world according to scriptures. So people flocked to Egypt. And because of Joseph, he brought the people of, he invited the people of Israel to Egypt. So what the, what, what, what the, the Israelite people did was to stay there, to dwell there. And for number, hundreds of years as they stayed there, the king of Egypt forgot about Joseph. And so what happened was, because sobrang lumalaki itong, itong population ng Israelites, he started to enslave them. And so when they were enslaved, labor became very difficult and it became very, very hard. And so the people of Israel, they started to cry out to God. 
And they were just asking God, Lord, we thought that we are your chosen people. Then bakit kami nahirapan? Why are we enslaved? This is not the kind of blessings. This is not the kind of life. This is not the kind of calling that I expected for us to live. So God heard their prayers. God heard the cries of their hearts. And so God responded by sending Moses to them to deliver them out of Egypt. So God rescued them. Because if you look at the story in Exodus, you would see how you would read and see how God just rescued them and God performed miracles upon miracles. And so when they were rescued and they got out of Egypt, we thought that everything's going to be fine. But it just all the more revealed the condition of their hearts. And then you could see in the story that though God took them away out of Egypt, the problem is Egypt stayed in them. They continued to long for Egypt. They continued to long for the comfort that being in Egypt gave. They long for the food of Egypt, the culture ng Egypt. And they were, though they were Israelites, they did not want to be enslaved, but Egypt was in them. And it did not take long for them to, alam yun, for them to to complain and to rebel against God. And they created these idols that God was greatly displeased. And so God realized that if I'm going to lead you to the promised land, hindi pwedeng you would have the same attitude. That you would have the same pursuit. That you would worship the same idols just like what the Egyptians were doing. God was saying, if I'm going to bring you to the promised land, I have to make sure that Egypt will be tangalized in your heart, in your mind, in your being. Because for God, He will, He's faithful to fulfill His promise. He is faithful to fulfill His covenant to His people. The problem is that the Israelites they started to complain and just they just started to, to complain about everything. And instead of praising and worshiping God, they started to complain to God and just rebel against God. And they just wanted to just have it their own way. So God led them to the wilderness. Alam niyo ba na instead of 40 days from, from, from Egypt, to the promised land. Instead of 40 days, because of their unfaithfulness, because of their rebelliousness, 40 days turned to 40 years. In fact, there were so many of them, all of them, who nanggaling ng Egypt except for Joshua and Caleb, sila lang, together with the younger generation, sila na po yung nakapasok sa promised land. Even Moses himself, he just saw the promised land. He wasn't able to enter into it. Why? Because of their unfaithfulness to God. And so you see, church, it's very important for all of us to understand that the God who called us, the God who delivered us, is the same God who will fulfill His promise into our lives. But at the same time, He requires our faithfulness. He requires our willingness to obey Him, to worship Him, and to submit to Him. And in the wilderness, that's where God started to do His work. And when you talk about the wilderness, there's, the, the wilderness is not an ideal place for you to be comfortable. <laughs> because they did not have everything. They did not have anything at all. And in this wilderness, God consistently just reminded them that I am the God who will provide for you. I am the God who will protect you. I am the God who will lead you. I am the God who will just really cover you and just reveal to you who I am. So in this 40 years time, God was consistently telling them, I am the God of your forefathers. I am going to lead you to your promised land. But instead of just really focusing on who God is, they kept on looking into their circumstance into what they don't have. How many times have we missed out on God, His revelation, His blessings for us, His plans for us, just because instead of focusing on God, we're so focused on ourselves, of what, on what we don't have. Kung wala sa 
And then we look at our friends, we look at our neighbors, we look at our family members, and we would start to say, Lord, buti pa sila. Ang, uh, alam mo, sana all, sa, kung anong meron sa sana, all, di ba? Minsan, ganun na yung statement natin. But have we ever just really come to God and say, Lord, even if I don't have these things, I have you, and you are enough for me. And you can see in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 2 to 4, where God explains the why He led the people of Israel to the wilderness. Because He wanted to humble them. Because He wanted to prove to them or showcase or reveal what is in their hearts. In fact, what I, would, what I want to share with you today are some principles or some truths that we have or that we can learn from the story of the Israelites. And the first truth that we can learn is this, that God knows the idols that our hearts crave. Okay? That God knows the idols that our hearts crave. You see, our hearts, it's plenty of idols. If it's not plenty, there is that one very idol that our heart is consistently pursuing. It's craving. It's desiring for it. We wake up every single day and we always run to that idol. When, you talk, when we talk about an idol, an idol is anything that we place above God in our lives. And naturally, when we're asked, kung tatanungin tayo, what are you pursuing in your life? What is, who is most important in your life? And we would always say, it's God. But ang hindi natin napapansin or hindi natin alam, may mga bagay that we have actually placed above God. Namely, comfort, power, fame, um, the applause of men. That's why these things control us. For example, I know, I know one person that he is crippled by this idol of pleasing people. That's why he cannot please God in, our, in his life just because he is so uh, into what people say. For example, one is that in his life, there's this uh, person that he met in, in church and they became good friends and he started to like the person. And as he started to pray about it and God was very clear, Go pursue the person. And then, yari ngayon, instead of just really pursuing the person, of course, magpaalam mo sa parents, which is the right thing to do. And the very moment that he asked permission sa parents niya, ang sabi ng parents niya, alam mo, anak, okay naman siya, Christian naman siya, pero hindi natin siya kauri. I mean, we're not from the same lineage or class. And I think, if sasagutin ka niya, sasagutin ka niya dahil sa kayamanan mo. Dahil sa kung anong meron ka. And because he did not want to displease his parents, he just did not pursue the, the, the woman that he wanted to pursue. And it, not, and, it, and it did not end there. It became just a series of, of decisions. It became, a ser- it became a pattern of his life that instead of just really asking God and obeying God and discerning the will of God for his life, He's crippled. He's paralyzed by the opinion of men. And it's not just really pleasing people. It could be comfort. And we don't want to do things if it becomes uncomfortable for us. And you treasure your comfort so much that you won't do anything, even if it's the will of God, if it's very uncomfortable for you. You see, there are so many things that our hearts carry. It could be burdens, it could be problems, it could be uh, hurts in the past. And sometimes the, the very reason why we are nursing those things or we are carrying those things is because of a particular idol in our hearts. And God exactly know these idols that our hearts crave. And if you look at the people of Israel, they were carrying these idols in their lives, the idol of comfort, the idol of Egypt, the, the spirit of Egypt upon them. And God had, to lead, God had to lead them to the wilderness, to the desert, so that they wouldn't be able to hold on to these idols. And the only thing that they can have and the only person that they can run to is God. You see, there are times that God would lead us into a desert so that we can experience Him more and that we would realize 
that nothing in this world would ever compare to how good and how great our God is. And the second truth that we can learn is this, that God leads you or that God leads us through the wilderness to humble you, not to make you a slave, but to free you from that which would ruin you. A lot of times in this world, success can lead to forgetfulness of God. If there are things that we could, that could lead us to forgetting God, it's not actually the bad things because a lot of times bad things or suffering would lead us would draw us closer to God. It leads us to God because when we feel limited, we would start to think and say, "Lord, kailangan kita." But a lot of times, success and comfort and power it leads to forgetfulness of God. We forget God when we are at our mountain peaks. There are times we would say that, "Oh, oh, glory to God," but in our hearts, in reality, we always say, huh, glory to me, kasi magaling ako. Our tendency is to either forget God or to replace God in our lives. That's why the Lord tells His people the why He led them to the wilderness. And for it's for the very reason to humble them. You see, the desert is a place where you have nothing and you need to hold on to something. And for the Israelites, they can only hold on to God and His provision. And in this, in this, um, in the desert where God led them, they were humbled. When you talk about being humbled, it's about having nothing. And you would see yourself in a very lowly place. It's not about. It, it's a place where you think of yourself less, and you just think, Lord, I may not have anything, but I have You. And a lot of times, God works in our lives when we are humbled. Because when we are so full of ourselves, hindi na tayo kaya mapuno ni God. Kasi ayaw natin makinig. And we're not willing and we're not ready to receive when we are already full. But when we are empty, that's where God fills us up. So if you are in this position where you feel empty, where you feel like you need to be filled up, the good news is, God will fill you up. And the good news is that God in His goodness, despite of Him leading us to wilderness, He is there with us. And He's going to build us up. He's going to pour out His grace in our lives. He's going to pour out His, His wisdom upon us. He's going to provide for us to the point that the only thing that we would ever desire is Him. In the wilderness, that's where we really realize that God is enough. That we would start to see and, and, and just, just realize that truly in this lifetime, the only thing that we would ever need is God. And the third thing that I want us to remember or for us to uh, learn and to know is this, that God calls us to remember who He is and what He's done for us. Yun pi yung gusto ni God, for us to remember, not to replace His position, not to replace who He is in our lives by a particular relationship or a particular job or your family, but remember God. That's how you honor God in your life, by remembering Him. And so Moses speaks to this New generation, because lahat po nung mga ancestors nila, yung mga papa nila, mga tatay, mga lolo nila, because of their disobedience to God, they will, they're not permitted to enter the promised land. And so, they all died in the wilderness. And here comes this next generation. And Moses was reminding them that remember who God is and what He has done for you and your ancestors. And for them, they might think, uh, yung ancestors namin namatay, and so is God, um, what kind of God is He? And so, Moses started to just explain to them, remember the God who rescued you, the God who delivered you. Remember the God who promised this promised land to you. And there are certain details that, that, that Moses started to mention in this passage, like the manna and the water that came out of, uh, of, of this stone. And God just wanted them to remember of God's ability to not just 
or to not just to deliver them out of their slavery, but as a God who will fulfill His promise to them. You see, when God provided that manna to their ancestors, it was also the first time that the ancestors heard about or, or, or yung nakatanggap ng mana. Also, this is what mana is. And at the same time, itong next generation na to, they, ju- they have just heard about it, but they also did not know what mana is. And so Moses had to explain to them that this is who God is and what He's able to do. But at the same time, it's not with what you feed your belly that would give you the essence of life, but it's the very words of God, it's the very promises of God, it's the very scripture that would bring us life. And every time we depart from biblical truth, we are headed to spiritual destruction. That's why it's very important for every one of us, for every child of God, for us to get into the word of God so that we would always be reminded of who God is, how faithful He is, and what He has done for us. So what are we specifically called to remember? Three things. First is we are called to remember His promises. You see, there are so many things that we can remember. We can remember the pain in our lives. We can remember the incidents growing up that have caused us trauma and yung mga bagay na ayaw nating maalala. But alam ang gusto ni God? Remember His promises. And if you look at, uh, if you look at the story of the people of, of, of Israel, not only were they rescued from slavery, but God wanted to remind them of the promises that He gave to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, even to Moses. The Word of God is filled with so many promises. And if we lose sight of God's promise for us, then we will come up with our own vision. We'll come up with our own um, ambition that we will just try to strive for success that is not in line with God's purpose, that is not in line with God's vision, that is not in line with the promises that God has intended for us. And if it's, if it's not clear with us, if, it, if we do not know what the promises of God are, then anything that would come our way, we could just, alam mo yung parang isipin natin, ay, ito blessing to ni God, even if nakakasira to mga bagay sa buhay natin. Secondly, remember God's faithfulness. Not only is God a generous God who gives His promises to us, to His children, but God is a God who is faithful to keep, to fulfill, to accomplish His promises in our lives. One of the favorite songs ng Lolo at Lola ko is the song, Great is Thy Faithfulness. And every time they sing that song, they cry. I ask them, Lolo tatay, lola nanay, why do you cry every time you sing the song, Great is Thy Faithfulness? And they would start to share their life story. And I don't have time to, to share everything. But they would always say that where they used to be and where they are now. And seeing their children and their grandchildren and how God has sustained them and blessed them. How God really saved them. And how God just really raised them up into, into a position, into a place where they can be used by God as well. They would always say, Lord, great is thy faithfulness. And there's so many things that if we could just truly have an inventory ng buhay natin, start to list down those little miracles that God has done. And you would start to say, Krabi, God is faithful. Oh, in this, in, our, in this situation, God was faithful. Oh, I remember in this very moment in my life, God was faithful. He never left me and He sustained me and He protected me. God is faithful. So we always have to remember the faithfulness of God in our lives. And thirdly, remember God's deliverance. God has delivered the people of Israel from the slavery of sin. In the same way, God did not only deliver us from our sicknesses, God did not just deliver us when we were in debt, may mga utang tayo, but God delivered us from the slavery of sin, all of us. The people of Israel, they were in sin, they were rebellious, and not even 40 years in the desert actually enabled them to conquer this rebelliousness in their lives. 
And so God made that way, that solution, the only answer to the, our problem of sin and rebelliousness. And He set His Son, Jesus Christ, for our sake. You see, when, when the thought of being humbled comes to our minds, inisip natin, ah, ayoko, ayoko masaktan, ayoko uh, ayoko uh, pumunta sa isang position where uh, I would be very, very uncomfortable. I don't want to go in the wilderness because it would really hurt me. It would really uh, pigaize me and ayoko, ah, ayoko ma-reveal, ayoko ma-expose. But that's the very intention of being humbled. We go through fire so that we could be refined. But it's going to be painful. But there's also, also another way that we could actually be humbled. When we remember the deliverance, how Jesus rescued us from the slavery of sin and death. And because of this grace and mercy that Jesus has taken us out um, because of His grace and mercy that enabled us to, to, to be victorious and to experience freedom from sin and death, now we can live the purposes of God, the life that God has intended for each and every one of us. But more importantly, we have been reconciled with God because of His deliverance through Jesus Christ our Lord. And what I'm trying to say here is that I want all of us to understand and to believe that deliverance is available because of who Jesus is and what He has done for us on the cross. That we have been set free from sin and death, from any wickedness, from the selfishness in our hearts, from this greed that we're struggling with. Anything that, any sinful patterns in our lives, it can be broken because of the victory that we have in Christ Jesus. And so we remember the deliverance that God has given us through Jesus Christ in the cross. And my prayer today for every one of us, if, we have, if there have been times that we have felt like we are self-sufficient, and there are times that we have forgotten about the goodness of God, remember, remember His promises for you. Promise of protection, promise of blessings, promise of, of, of good health, promise of eternal life, promise of this eternal hope that can be found in Jesus Christ. Not only that, remember God's faithfulness in your life. The very reason why sometimes we miss out is because we are focused on our failures and not on the faithfulness of God. But remember that we will consistently fail, but amidst our failures, God will consistently be faithful. And His faithfulness is greater than our failures. And at the same time, remember how God delivered you and where God has brought you. There are so many times that sometimes we look back, Lord, sayang yung nakaraan ko. But I hope and pray that, that, that you would just completely let go, cut off, not replace the work of God and, and the personhood of God in your life. But I hope that as God has delivered you out of the slavery of sin and death and rebelliousness and wickedness in your life, I hope you understand that God has delivered you from those things so that you could experience the very best of what He has prepared and intended for you. John chapter 10, verse 10, The enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came that you might have life and experience it to the full. Jesus Christ came into this world so that you will experience the very best that God has to offer. So many times we struggle with, with uh, finances and the cares of the world, but I do hope and pray that today you will remember who God is and what He has done for you. Church, as we end, I pray that you will continue to desire for God and long for God in your life. Because our God, the God who rescued you and delivered you is the very God who is faithful to use you for His purposes and for His glory. Let us pray. Father, thank you for reminding us today, Lord, that though we may fail and just like the people of Israel, Moses instructed them, remember God, remember God, remember God. And there are times, Lord, that we 
actually don't remember you but lord we are consumed by the ways of the world lord we are consumed god by by pursuing uh, our careers our ambition how to make money but lord remind us once again god that even as you have given us the ability to produce wealth lord we have you in our lives you're the source of all blessings even as your word says the earth is the lord's and everything in it the world and all who live in it so lord that should stir a faith in our hearts knowing that you are the god who will give us lord uh, all spiritual blessings in fact you have given all spiritual blessings in christ jesus and so lord we receive it by faith right now but lord at the same time we repent for this for those moments that we have trusted in our own selves and trusted our own capacity Lord, we're not worthy to receive your blessings, but you gave God the very best of all blessings. You gave us your son, Jesus Christ. In, and in, in him, Lord, we, have, we, we find fullness of joy. And we, in him, Lord, we, we are justified. And in him, Lord, we, are, uh, we have been reconciled with you. So, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done in our lives. And as we remember God, as we remember your goodness, as we remember your promises, as we remember your faithfulness, Lord, as we remember your deliverance, I pray, Lord, that you would turn, God, these this very emotions, God, into a heart that is grateful. Lord, we are grateful. I pray, Lord, don't let our hearts, God, have, uh, to have this empty space, to have this vacuum in our hearts. But, Lord, our prayer Lord, give us grateful hearts. And so, Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters right now. Lord, let them remember. Holy Spirit, I pray, let them remember the goodness of God in their lives. And Lord, that as they remember your, your, your faithfulness and your goodness, that they would just be grateful. And let this gratefulness, God, just lead them to worship you in everything that they do. So, Lord, bless your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you all lift up your hands before the Lord as I pray a prayer blessing? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Lord, you are our peace. You are our joy. You are our hope. And Lord, as we run to you, you're going to fill us up. Thank you, God, for satisfying and fulfilling us. We honor you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you everyone for worshiping with us. Have a great Sunday. If you need prayer requests, do send us a message. Have a great Sunday everyone. God bless you.